That boy isn't yours. So, here we are with one of the biggest twists from Agatha All Along, Episode 4. Rio Vidal drops a bombshell when she tells Agatha that Teen isn't her son. Now, if you've been following along, Agatha's believed that Teen was actually her son, Nicholas Scratch. This whole time. You don't have to know a person's name to know who they are. So, this revelation, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. But the real question is, do we believe Rio Vidal? Who is she anyway? And why was Agatha convinced Teen was her son in the first place? These are some huge questions that episode four is starting to unpack. All right, before we dig deeper into this, just a quick heads up, spoilers ahead. If you haven't caught up on all four episodes of Agatha All Along yet, hit up Disney Plus and give them a watch. Trust me, you don't want these surprises ruined. Oh, and hey, if you're new around here or haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. It helps you stay updated on all things MCU, and it gives Cinemamu the boost we need to keep creating awesome content for you. All right, let's get into it. So let's talk about Nicholas Scratch. This name's been floating around for a while now, especially after episode three dropped. Fans have been buzzing with theory, and honestly, there's been plenty of Easter eggs and clues that point to Teen possibly being Nicholas Scratch. I mean, remember that conversation between Jennifer Kale and Teen? Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. That was a major hint, plus Agatha's hallucination. She literally heard a baby crying, and many people thought that was supposed to be Nicholas Scratch. But plot twist, it turns out to be a copy of The Dark Hold, AKA The Book of the Damned. That's the Book of the Damned. Classic MCU misdirection, right? Ah! And let's not forget the room where Agatha keeps all these memories of her child. It's super sentimental. And for a while, fans thought that was a dead giveaway. Oh, and how can we not talk about Senior Scratchy? Yeah, the rabbit. Agatha even named her pet rabbit after Nicholas Scratch. So it's not hard to see why people thought there was a connection. Maybe the rabbit isn't literally her son, though this is the MCU, so who knows. But Agatha's attachment to Senior Scratchy tells us there's more going on here. There are also some pretty wild theories flying around about what happened to Nicholas Scratch. One of the more popular ones is that he was caught in some magical fallout between Agatha and Rio Vidal. Some people even think Rio Vidal could be Lady Death, this cosmic being that feeds off of souls. In this theory, Agatha went head to head with Scarlet Witch and got her hands on the dark hold to bring Nicholas back to life. Another theory suggests that Agatha straight up gave Nicholas to Mephisto or Shthon in exchange for the Darkhold and some serious magical power. And if you're into the comics, you'll remember Nicholas Scratch was actually one of Mephisto's agents. So this idea isn't totally off the wall. Which theory are you leaning toward? Let me know in the comments because I'm curious what you guys think about all this. And look, I get why so many people are convinced that Teen is Nicholas Scratch. I mean, his whole relationship with Agatha is suspiciously close. And there's also the sigil on Teen, remember that? It's that magical mark that prevents him from revealing his true Again, identity. A lot of people think Agatha's responsible for that, and it ties into this larger mystery. Then there's that moment with Jennifer Kale. Do you guys remember this line? She says, Agatha wouldn't even recognize her own child if he showed up at her doorstep. I doubt she'd even recognize her own son if he showed up at her doorstep. I mean, isn't that exactly what happened in episode one when Teen shows up and Agatha doesn't recognize him? It's all lining up, right? But then comes Rio Vidal. Out of nowhere, she tells Agatha, no, teen's not your son. That boy isn't yours. That throws a wrench into everything we've been thinking. So who the heck is teen? Is Rio telling the truth? Or is there something else going on that we're missing? You know how the MCU loves to play with our expectations? So this could be another classic bait and switch. Maybe Rio Vidal has her own agenda, or maybe she's not who we think she is. Either way, we're finally starting to get some answers. But of course, it's just making things more complicated. Personally, I've got my own theory, but I'll save that for later. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you trust Rio Vidal, or do you think there's more to the story than she's letting on? So, what exactly went down in episode four? A lot, honestly. To keep things clear, let's break it down a bit. First off, we're coming off that crazy first trial from episode three. Remember the full moon phase or water phase where we tragically lost Mrs. Hart, AKA Sharon Davis. Well, episode four kicks off with her funeral. 
And while this scene isn't packed with tons of groundbreaking moments, it definitely gives us some insight into Agatha's character. Let me tell you, Agatha's selfishness is on full display here. RIP Mrs. Hart. It's like she doesn't even care that Mrs. Hart is dead. I mean, she's literally ready to move on with their journey without even waiting for Mrs. Hart's body to be buried. Shall we? Cold, right? But of course, the rest of the coven isn't having it. They're not about to just follow Agatha without giving Mrs. Hart a proper burial. Plus, now that Mrs. Hart is gone, they're down a member of the coven, which complicates things even more. And here's where things get interesting. Since they're short a coven member, they use this special spell to summon the nearest witch to come join them and fill the spot left by Mrs. Hart. Advocamus sororem weary. And guess who shows up? Yep, Rio Vidal. Now, why Rio Vidal? Well, the simplest explanation is that she was probably the closest witch to Westview. How did you? I was in the neighborhood. But honestly, I think there's more to it. My theory? Rio Vidal's been lurking around Witches' Road the entire time. I heard you guys were having a party. Without Agatha or the rest of the coven knowing. That's probably why the door to Witches' Road opened in the first place, even though Mrs. Hart wasn't technically a witch. Well, I think I'm just, I'm gonna grab my purse. Rio's presence may have been what allowed them to enter the mystical dimension to begin with. So, in a way, Rio's been involved in this journey from the start. Oh, and let me tell you, Rio Vidal is definitely not who the coven was hoping for. From the beginning, Agatha has been super reluctant to have Rio as part of their group. Even though Lilia Calderu had already put heart on the official coven list, Agatha wanted nothing to do with her. Yeah, Lilia said four names. Yep. Let me see, let me see. What are you? And that heart nickname? Yeah, it's short for Black Heart, which is Rio Vidal's title. You have a heart. Yes, I do. It's black especially in relation to her connection with Agatha. They hinted at this all the way back in episode one. So when Agatha had to find someone named Hart to join the coven, instead of turning to Rio Vidal, who was obviously more qualified, she brought in Mrs. Hart instead. So yeah, just, I was just wondering if you'd like to come to a little party I'm having tonight. Who didn't even have any magical abilities. Kind of says a lot, right? Maybe this is the end. Now, why doesn't Agatha want Rio Vidal around? There are a few possibilities, but I think it goes deeper than just a past grudge or some romantic drama. I'm convinced that Rio was involved in a dark chapter of Agatha's life, one that might have something to do with what happened to Nicholas Scratch. Do you remember why you hate me? This isn't about some old flame or love triangle. No, this is something much darker. Rio might have played a part in Nicholas's downfall, which would explain Agatha's bitterness toward her. Whatever the reason, one thing's for sure. Agatha is not happy to see Rio in Witch's Road. The tension between them is undeniable, and it's clear there's a lot of unresolved history between these two. But hey, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. There's a lot more to unpack about who Rio Vidal really is, and we'll dive into all those theories in the next video. Trust me, there's so much to explore when it comes to Rio's backstory and what her arrival means for Agatha and the rest of the coven. So let's get into the next part of the episode, where things really heat up, literally. In this trial, Agatha and her coven are thrown into the fire phase, fire phase, or what they call the crescent moon phase. This time, they find themselves dealing with the curse of Alice Wu Gulliver's family. Right after they continue their journey, they stumble upon this old 70s style house. Turns out, this is where Alice Wu grew up. As soon as they step inside, just like the previous episodes, their clothes transform, but this time they're all decked out like 70s rock band members. Pretty cool, right? And here's the twist. The challenge they face is to keep the coven in sync by performing a song, but not just any song. It's the Witch's Road Ballad, written by Lorna Wu, Alice's mother. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We finally learn that Lorna Wu used this very same ballad during a concert back in the day. She performed it to open a gateway to Witch's Road and recruit her audience as her coven members. And why did she do this? All to break the curse that had been haunting her daughter, Alice. Unfortunately, something went wrong. We're not entirely sure what happened, but what we do know is that Lorna's plan failed. She died on tour. She died on tour. Hotel fire. But before she passed, she left a message for Alice. 
the message that Witch's Road is the key to breaking their family's curse and ultimately saving Alice herself. And that, my friends, is why Alice agreed to join Agatha's journey down Witch's Road. It wasn't just about helping the coven, it was personal. She's trying to save herself and break free from the curse that's been tormenting her family for generations. Poor thing. Poor us. Now, while they're inside the house, there are all these creepy drawings on the walls, showing different methods of witch execution from way back in the day. This freaks Lilia Caldero out, and you can tell she's really shaken. It seems like one of the images may have reminded her of a friend who was executed during those dark times. There's definitely some emotional weight here for her. But here's the real kicker. The fire element is everywhere in this episode. The curse that once belonged to Alice Wu's family starts spreading to the other coven members. One by one, they get these gnarly burn marks on their shoulders. Alice, seeing her fellow witches in danger, steps up and creates a protective circle, trying to save each one of them. In the end, the coven manages to perform the ballad perfectly. And guess what? Alice Wu succeeds in breaking the curse. That fiery curse literally manifests as this demon-like creature, oozing with hellish vibes and flames. But Alice, with the help of the coven, defeats it and shatters the curse once and for all. All right, let's get back to Teen and the whole mystery surrounding him. In the middle of that intense ballad scene, Teen is the one playing guitar. But right before the song ends, things take a turn. Teen gets injured, hit by shattered glass that slices into his stomach. He collapses, unconscious. And things start getting real tense. Luckily, after the trial ends, a piano opens up, revealing a path for the coven to escape the house. The whole coven rushes to help and drag Teen out to safety. He's barely hanging on. And while most of the coven is freaking out, there's one person who doesn't seem to care, Rio Vidal. In fact, Rio almost looks... Happy? Yeah, it's weird. While everyone else is panicking about Teen dying, Rio has this strange smile. Like this is something she's been waiting for. Now, this is where things get even more interesting. And trust me, we've got a whole theory on why Rio Vidal might be so pleased about Teen's condition. But we're gonna save that for another video because it's a pretty long and wild ride. What really stands out though is Agatha's reaction. Out of all the people, Agatha, who's been pretty cold and distant up until now, starts to show genuine concern for Teen. It's a complete 180 from her previous attitude. I mean, this is the same Agatha who didn't even flinch when Mrs. Hart died. But here, she's absolutely terrified at the thought of losing Teen. You can really see her softer side coming through, and it's clear that Teen means more to her than she's been letting on. Maybe she's starting to see Teen as a replacement for her son, Nicholas Scratch. It's hard to say for sure, but there's definitely some maternal vibes kicking in here. Thankfully, Jennifer Kale steps in with some kind of healing spell. And just like that, Teen's wounds start to heal. The coven manages to save him just in time. Agatha's relief is palpable, but there's still this lingering tension. She knows something is off, especially when it comes to Rio Vidal's interest in Teen. And here's where it gets even juicier. Agatha, who's normally so proud and stubborn, is suddenly willing to make peace with Rio Vidal. Why? Because Agatha is straight up scared of what Rio might do to Teen if she doesn't. It's a huge shift in their dynamic, and it leaves us with so many questions. Who is Rio Vidal, really? Why is she so obsessed with death? And why is Agatha so afraid of her? We'll dive into all of that in a special deep dive video, so stay tuned for that. But back to Teen. After some tense moments, he regains consciousness. And this is where things get super intriguing. There are so many little details and clues in this episode, from his facial expressions to the hints dropped by other characters that have fans convinced Teen is actually Nicholas Scratch, Agatha's long lost son. But here's the kicker. At the very end of the episode, Rio Vidal drops a bombshell. She tells Agatha that Teen isn't her son. Wait, what? Surprise! Just like that, all those Nicholas Scratch theories get thrown out the window. Or do they? Can we really trust Rio Vidal's word on this? Honestly, we don't know yet. Everything's still up in the air. Until we get some solid confirmation, anything's possible. Including the idea that Teen could still be Nicholas Scratch, hiding in plain sight. But Rio's statement does open the door to another possibility. That Teen might actually be Billy Kaplan, yeah, Wiccan, I mean, think about it. 
Teen's personality, his powers, his whole vibe, they all line up so well with Billy Kaplan. And if Teen is Billy, that could mean we're one step closer to the return of Scarlet Witch herself. And let's be real, we've all been waiting for Wanda Maximoff to come back to the MCU, right? Like, we need some answers about where Wanda's been and what's next for her. The excitement around this possibility is real. So what do you guys think? Could Teen actually be Billy Kaplan? Or are you sticking with the theory that he's Nicholas Scratch, despite Rio's cryptic comment? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so make sure to drop your theories in the comments below. Let's get a discussion going. I'm really curious to see where you all stand on this. And if you've made it this far, I'm guessing you're just as obsessed with the MCU as I am. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we've got tons of MCU content coming your way. And I'd love for you to be part of the conversation. Plus, your support really helps the channel grow and keeps us motivated to bring you more awesome content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.